to the Light TV. We're here for episode three of Children and Communicating with Them and how it affects their development. We're back here with Miss Iram Husnan, and we're here for episode three. Last time she was here solo, talking about ages zero to three, and now we're here to talk about ages three to six in their development. So, when we're thinking about ages three to six, there's a lot of things that they're going through. They're starting school, they're growing up, they're creating their own personalities. They're not reliant on their parents for every single thing. They can wake up and walk down the steps by themselves, you know, walk around their house by themselves. So there's a lot of new things that they're exploring in their lives. So what are some things that we can look forward to when we're looking at ages three to six and when we're communicating with them in their development? Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm good, alhamdulillah. So, like you said today, it's a very interesting topic. We're talking about the ages of three to six years mm -hmm. old, um, where we have the tantrums, we've got the confidence overflowing in children, uh, we've got their personality development, and the biggest concern would be the confidence and the speech. And again, like I said in our previous episodes, do not compare your child mm -hmm. with another child. So, beginning with uh, 3 to 3.6, so let's just do it, break it down to six months each for mm -hmm. the child's age. So, um, as I spoke in the previous episode, uh, the age of three, sometimes some parents, due to their careers and due to their priorities, um, again, life does get a bit hard on all of us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Um, parents tend to put their children into daycare. Now, that can be very challenging. It's a whole new um, criteria where the mother is learning to let go of her child. Mm -hmm. The father has to ease the mother's worries. And the child, him or herself, is beginning to get that social separation yeah. away from the mother and the father, who the child is very close to. So in that terms, it is okay. Let's not have this guilt barrier where mm -hmm. the mother feels so guilty. Oh, I've got to go back to work and my child is being looked after at a daycare or even at a friend's house or, uh, again, as we discussed in episode one, joint families. Mm -hmm. So let's just get the guilt phase out. And again, if this is really what you must do for your child, allow your child to accept mm -hmm. that this child is going to be away from you. And you must accept as a parent as well that this is okay. My child is going to a safe place. I know my child is being looked after mm -hmm. and cared for. So this helps the child in understanding that, okay, I'm alone. If I am hungry or if I need to use the toilet or if I need to express myself, how do I troubleshoot? So this is how we are going to begin with uh, today's six-month mm -hmm. course of how the child develops. Right. Okay. Um, so let's dive into that. How do, they, how do they create the confidence to let anyone around them know to, I need to use the restroom, I'm hungry. How do they know that they won't be yelled at for crying or like feeling in distress? So how do, th how do we know that they can communicate that or how do we teach them to communicate that? Again, like I said in uh, the previous episode, we are the ones who bring fear into our children. Mm -hmm. It's just like the example I had given that if a child falls down, the first thing a mother is going to do is, <gasps> yeah. So that slight three to four second expression stays in that child's head for the rest of his or her life. So we must not bring that fear into the child, level one. Level two, the child brings enough confidence and the personality from how the child was molded mm -hmm. at a younger age, how we spoke about zero to six months yep. and how it went higher and higher, how the child gets more clingy, more fond, and has to see the mother and the father mm -hmm. together. So this is how the child will develop the understanding that, okay, if I'm in a school and if I'm being told that this is my teacher and these are my friends, and of course the child will see other children as well mixing with the teacher mm -hmm. itself, 
automatically the confidence level will allow the child yeah. to go and say, I have a problem, I am hungry, I would like to use the toilet. It all comes from home. Now remember, home is our number one schooling. Yeah. I'm sure you must remember your time when you were a child. Yeah. There's a lot of things you remember, maybe your parents don't remember, but it stays etched in your mm -hmm. mental states. So this is very important. That's good. Um, when we're thinking about going into school, so there's a lot of, in America especially, there's a lot of pre-K daycare opportunities for any ages from two to four. There's a lot of primary education before they head into, of course, primary school. Um, how do we let the parent show the child it's okay to go there and it's okay to create friends and feel comfortable while they're there? Again, this would go back to the previous episode where I have mentioned his siblings, even granny and granddad. All of that information will start validating itself while that child goes into deep sleep mode. So this is why I always say, if you would like to teach your child reading alphabets, why do we say read a book before bedtime? That is the most concentrated mm -hmm. and powerful time for the child to pick the information yeah. and keep it locked up in his subconscious mind. So if I have my child going to school every night during bedtime, it's not only the child preparing himself going to school, it's you as a parent making those small changes, bringing it into routine mm -hmm. and changing yourself as well, preparing yourself that I am going to send my child off. So these are the changes I must do in order for the child to accept the new normal for them, to be away from the whole sets up at home, the mother, the father, the siblings. So it is very important for the mother to keep reminding his or her child, um, you are very confident, I love you, tomorrow's a big day at school, right. uh, you will have lots of friends with you. So Positive the child doesn't feel, say. yes, so the child doesn't feel like he's going to be abandoned at a daycare center, for example. Mm -hmm. No, the, ch the mother has to provide these small details which will be in the child's subconscious mind and him or her accepting that, yes, I will be going to school, but like mummy said, I will have friends. Yes. I will have a teacher who will be like mummy, but not mummy, but she will be there to listen to me. She will be there to help me. So this is very important in terms of routine every single night, creating this subject where it's just you and your child having this solo mm -hmm. briefing of the day and how the events will unfold after the child wakes up. So this is what I would always suggest to all parents, that please have a routine. Creative Communication routine, yes. is key. Right. Creating a routine is very important. Um, so especially when they come back from school, there's still a couple of hours before bedtime. What are some things that a parent could do to implement their child to stay on a routine? Because I know we've mentioned before, screen time, we want to keep that at a minimum. Absolutely. When they come home from school, we don't just want to give them a phone, give them the TV. Absolutely. So what are some things that we, they can try to implement in the house that they could be and work as a family and do things together? Well, firstly, when the child comes back home, let's just try to feed the child first because <laughs> yeah. you know food is energy <laughs> food is energy yep. and again now uh, we will also talk about food in another um, episode yep. inshallah where a lot of us you know the child's cranky he's had a tough day at school mm -hmm. and daycare he's home he's back in his security comfort zone so let's not just give the child a bag of crisps or mm -hmm. um, pop fizzy drinks or anything just to calm your child down mm -hmm. no the best policy that I did with my children as well was once they come back from school, make sure the food is ready prior to having mm -hmm. those tantrums and the crying and the screaming, which is very difficult for the mother to control. But again, it is in a way the mother's job to have everything set so when the children come home, it's fun time for her as mm -hmm. well as the children, where you can sit and ask your child, so what did you learn right. today? What How you was your school? day? 
Um, did you make friends? Oh, what was the fr were your friend's name? Yeah. What did your friend look like? Again, communication backwards and forwards. Your child will be so happy mm -hmm. that my mother or my father is paying so much attention to what yeah. I'm doing instead of being handed over the iPad or the Xbox or mobile phone devices to rewind and relax. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely not. Because that keeps them engaged, that, that, not engaged, they, that keeps their mind moving. It's, it doesn't allow them to relax. Their, their mind is still like on like this. Absolutely, Correct. which yeah. is why then your child gets more cranky. Correct. The child yeah. ignores the food because the child feels, okay, my mother has allowed me to pick the gadget and then the child will slowly start emotionally blackmailing his or her parent mm -hmm. because they will know that, oh, this is how I will get my yes. way, by crying and by telling mommy, I don't care, by shouting, by using my vocal cords in such a way which he knows right. that it is unacceptable. But seeing that the mother is defeated, of course the child is going to be smart enough to learn yeah. what emotional blackmail is. Mm -hmm. And again, we will talk about this, especially when the child goes it's into pre-teens yeah. and teenagers. So that's another interesting topic we will have, inshallah. Definitely. Um, so when we're talking about when they come home from school um, and some things that they could do, I know that um, we have a large Muslim population that are watching us. Um, when is a good time to introduce Islam into the child's life, into their education, starting that off? Deen is, number one, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Deen is why we are sitting here. Deen is why we are having these shows to tell mm -hmm. people how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen all of us and mm -hmm. has given us the opportunity to be parents. Again, it's an exam. It's not just the baby's born and that's right. it. No. The baby being born, that's it, chapter's closed. But then the whole, how you're bringing up that child, that is where your Islam comes. The deen, the dunya, the hadith, mm -hmm. everything comes in, categorized as it was categorized back then. Mm -hmm. SubhanAllah, it's such, a, it's such a beautiful journey for all of us. So if you ask me, the sooner the better, mm -hmm. especially like you just stated that we're in the US. Yeah. So we, we aren't just looking at our child going to an Islamic school. You will have so many other nationalities, so many other children mm -hmm. who are Muslims, but from different countries. And then at school, you will have non-Muslims. So the sooner the better being, if the child goes and interacts with a non-Muslim and the other child has a question for the Muslim, he will not be hesitant and he won't be confused in telling his or her friend that yes, I am Muslim and being confident and being enough proud. to telling them mm -hmm. and being proud and happy that yes, I am Muslim. And knowing what it is, not just saying yes. I am Muslim because the other kids still won't know. So of course they're going to ask. What is that? They're going to be curious. Absolutely. So of course, that child knowing enough to say that is my religion, that is my deen, and just saying it with confidence. So Absolutely. Course. Absolutely. Because um, till now, there's a lot of children. Again, subhanAllah, children are so innocent. Yeah. They're like little sponges. <laughs> they take in so much. Everything. And then when they want to let it out, it's a whole new tantrum. Yes. Yeah. So it's very, very important in the mother or the father. Again, I'm not just going to say that it's the mother's job. No, like we had in episode one, it is an equal responsibility. It's a partnership where the father has to put in his input as well as the mother. Then you have the beautiful result, a confident young individual, your child is confident enough to be a part of this world, be a part of the people he is mixing in on a daily routine. So when a child would come up to a, our Muslim children and say, what is Allah? Your child should be confident enough to say, Allah is my creator. Mm -hmm. Allah is the one who made me. Allah is the one who made my family. And I think that's very, very interesting because then in a way our children are spreading 
our deen yeah, in message. such a beautiful way, in such a nice way, yeah. where the other child can say, oh, that's interesting. I would like to know more, more. about mm -hmm. um, what do Muslims do, yeah. what is Ramadan, what is Eid. So it is the sooner the better. Right. And I like how you brought up what is Ramadan, what is Eid. That's um, definitely a big thing because when children are small, especially in the first two, three years of school, they're seeing all the other kids celebrate Christmas, Thanksgiving, yes. things like that, and they feel left out. So Absolutely. So definitely pushing Eid, Ramadan, these things in your household um, is very important because it allows a child to understand what their own religion is and accept it and feel appreciative and not feel like they're left out from the other cultures. Absolutely. Because, yeah. Absolutely. So I know that's something that is very important as well. It is because when I... Um, speak about my children, uh, my daughter would always question me that, Mommy, why do Muslims not have enough events? Because mm -hmm. uh, we only have, the we have Eid yes. and the whole month of Ramadan. Yes, and Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. the reward yes. we get in Ramadan yeah. is equivalent to years yeah. of worshipping yes. our Creator. So when you put these small um, information in bits and pieces, the way I explain to my daughter that look, the three events we have from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the reward you're getting, it made her so happy. Again, we are talking about communication, mm -hmm. bringing your mind down to the level of that innocent child's yep. mind, which is being molded mm -hmm. and is picking all the information at such a young age. Because again, children's minds are subhanAllah absolutely powerful and absolutely always charged you know they've got the backup generator running even though you feel that your child's not taking interest believe me they mm -hmm. are taking each and every interest which is why i always say even if there's a mature conversation between a husband and a wife or siblings or either the older sibling has to be shouted at do not do it in front of the younger child mm -hmm. because their brain is so capable and gullible of taking all of that energy and they wouldn't be able to understand why is this right. happening to my older brother or sister and why are my parents talking in such a way which unfortunately if it's not corrected at an earlier age they will begin to accept yeah. that shouting it's is okay. the way exactly. to speak and be respectful when astaghfirullah that is not the way we are supposed to behave with our partners with mm -hmm. our children so this is very another interesting um, episode for us to talk about later on inshallah but the sooner the better because once they go to school and like you said it's u.s multicultural yes. um a lot of nationalities coming and going the way I have it back home in Dubai as well. The child is confident yeah. that I understand you are from whichever country you mm -hmm. are. And it's interesting. I would like to learn more. But again, when the child comes back home, that child knows this is my deen, this is my dunya, mm -hmm. this is how my mother has told me, this is how my father has told me. And they start enjoying it. Right. That's really good. That's good to know to start sooner is the better absolutely um going back to after so three to four we we talked about that when they get into um the four five six they start picking up hobbies different hobbies that they could do sports or like different like art classes that they can do what are some things that um how how can the parent allow the child to do that like how is the child going to say, I want to do this? And how is the parent going to accept that and say, sure, we can do that. That is fine. Again, it comes to communication. Mm -hmm. So please listen to your child. Again, like how we just spoke, <coughs> that when the child comes back from school, the child feels tired, hungry, cranky. But the more information we get from our child, the more the child's going to feel happy that this person is actually listening to me. This person is actually wanting to know how my day was, even though if it was a bad day. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to children and having extracurricular activities, mm -hmm. suppose your child does like arts or drama or creative writing, 
please allow them yes. to do so. Because again, the child, apart from what him or her are picking at home, it's building their confidence. It's allowing your child to understand, oh, yes, I do like this subject. Mm -hmm. I will put my efforts because I know my mother and father will appreciate yeah. my work. And again, it builds confidence. Yeah. It tells, it allows your child to understand that apart from having the routine of going to school, meeting his or her friends, there is a certain me time mm -hmm. where I can just do things that I really, really want to. So if your child does show you the need, the joy, the excitement, like my daughter keeps saying she would like to be an astronaut or go oh, to space, wow. I oh, keep wow. saying, okay, okay. Uh, it's not impossible. <coughs> You never know, she might right. be on the moon. But the whole prospect of this time being is that allow your child, allow them mm -hmm. to break free. Do not, and again, do not say, I think school is just enough for you. No, if your child does have the stamina and does have the confidence and the eagerness to learn, allow them to do mm -hmm. so and always be a part of yes. your child's daily routine. Weekends, yes, we all can have fun as a family. Mm -hmm. But again, asking and talking and the communication right. that you're having, especially how I emphasized bedtime routine. Again, talking about how the events unfolding during that whole day, what the child did at school, how was art club, how was sports. I do know right. you love sports yeah. as well. So it brings a lot of confidence in your child, not only physical and mental growth, but as a person, and especially living in this phase, <coughs> all of our children right. do need confidence. So yes, please allow your children. That's good. Um, one more thing before we end today, I just wanted to piggyback off of what you were saying right now. It does build the confidence, but it also creates trust within the parent Absolutely. and the child. Because if you allow them to start doing things they like now, of course, when we talk about older ages, it decreases the lying and the hiding when they get older to the teenager, the preteen ages. Absolutely. So definitely that's something we can ex explain or like look into when we look at the older ages. Yes, but, yeah. absolutely. Because again, it all comes back to zero to 10. Yep. Why did we begin our lectures from zero to 10? Because your main school is your home. Right. Your main teachers are your parents. Mm -hmm. And then bringing all the deen, the dunya, um, the confidence, yeah. the love, all of this, your main school is your house. Right. And again, like we just, you had just mentioned about the trust issues, um, the lying. Yeah. This is a very, very important topic, which will inshallah come on later yes. in our episodes as we go higher by age. Yep. But again, when the communication is soft, is smooth, your child wouldn't want to lie to you. Right. For example, before we wind up, I'll give you a short story where my daughter once broke a vase. Mm -hmm. Now she was, obviously she was four years old, she was scared that she broke mummy's vase. But she had the confidence mm -hmm. to come to me and said, I broke your vase. Right. Now, if I wanted to, I could have Scrant. I could have said my Reacted vase in a such a way. Yes, and that fear would have been developed in mm -hmm. my child. That okay. So the next time, even if I break the small, a small yeah. item, you can't even a pencil, mom. the fear will just yep. jump in, and that child will say, "I'd rather not tell." just to be on the safer side. Mm -hmm. But instead of scaring my daughter, I changed the whole yeah, subject and good. I said, I do understand it was a big mistake. That was my favorite vase. Mm -hmm. I do feel upset, but it's okay. Right. You're not hurt, I'm not hurt, let's clean it up together. So okay. subhanAllah, communication yeah. is the key. Yes. Okay, and that wraps, wraps up our third episode. Um, from ages three to six and definitely hopefully inshallah we'll talk again for ages six to ten possibly yes inshallah it's okay. a very long um topic yes the more the better yes so inshallah, inshallah. yes inshallah okay. thank you thank you so much for having me no problem